Earlier, I spoke with NSC Coordinator for Strategic Communications, John Kirby. John Kirby, welcome back to The Sunday Show. Thank you so much for having me, Jonathan. Good to be with you. Uh, President Biden heads to Poland tomorrow, landing there just three days before the one-year anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. This will be his second trip to Poland. What's on the itinerary? There's a few things he really wants to make sure he does. And one thing is to thank the Polish people for the incredible support that they have provided Ukraine over the course of the last year. Not only uh, as well, the, the support they provided uh, thousands of American troops that are now on rotational deployments in Poland supporting that effort. Uh, Poland has really stepped up as a NATO ally and a good friend uh, to host us, as well as to support Ukraine's military in the field with some $4 billion worth of security assistance just in the past year. Also important to thank them for the more than a million and a half of Ukrainian refugees that they are hosting on, on Polish soil, and quite, uh, quite generously so. The president also is going to have a bilateral meeting with President Duda of, of Poland to talk about, obviously, the war in Ukraine and other regional issues. And, of course, the president's going to deliver uh, a set of remarks in Warsaw, uh, communicating how important it is for the world to stay united in supporting Ukraine now as this war sadly heads into uh, a second year. So the pretty clear itinerary you just laid out there of what the president's going to do. One thing I noticed you didn't mention is the possibility that the president will slip into Ukraine on this trip. Is there a possibility that the president could actually go into Ukraine, even if it's a, a couple of feet, to show some solidarity with the Ukrainian people? Well, we uh, obviously are, are, are maintaining a high degree of solidarity with the Ukrainian people. The United States leads the world in terms of contributions, whether it's humanitarian assistance or, or military weapons to Ukraine. And we're going to continue uh, to use our convening power to marshal the world to galvanize support for Ukraine. But there are no plans for the president to enter into Ukraine mm -hmm. on this particular trip. All right. Let's uh, switch gears and talk about Russia in particular. In her speech yesterday in Munich, Vice President Harris publicly accused Russia of committing war crimes in Ukraine. And that's certainly an escalation in rhetoric against Russia. But are there legal implications for such a public declaration? Outside of sanctions, how will Russia be held accountable? The Crimes Against Humanity declaration that the vice president did, well, we hope will galvanize the rest of the world uh, to, to likewise continue to want to hold and to support investigator, uh, investigative efforts to hold uh, Russia accountable for the war crimes and the atrocities uh, that they are conducting inside Ukraine. That designation, Crimes Against Humanity, uh, demonstrates that we believe that this is a systematic, deliberate effort by the Kremlin. These aren't just wanton acts by uh, Russian soldiers uh, indiscriminately. Uh, that this is a systematic attack by uh, the Kremlin on the people uh, of Ukraine. And again, we hope that this will help uh, galvanize and support uh, additional efforts by the international community. We are going to continue, as we have, to help, uh, uh, to help international uh, bodies collect the evidence, analyze the evidence, and prepare that evidence for the appropriate time when international tribunals uh, can take over to, to hold uh, Russia accountable. Uh, John, let's talk about uh, China. The United States believes that China may be providing non-lethal military assistance to Russia for use in Ukraine. Uh, and also, the administration believes that, um, well, the administration is concerned that China will consider sending lethal aid. Vice President Harris warned against this in her speech in Munich yesterday. Secretary of State Blinken told NBC's Chuck Todd that he issued a similar warning to his Chinese counterpart. But what can the United States do to right. stop China from doing this? Well, look, every country has to make a sovereign decision, and, and China has to make their sovereign decisions. And we made it very clear to China, uh, publicly and privately, that there would be consequences should they uh, add to Russia's military capabilities to continue to kill innocent Ukrainians. Uh, there would be consequences. I'm not prepared to get into the details of that right here, uh, but we have definitely made that clear. Uh, China has a choice to make, as I said, uh, and they should choose uh, to be on the side of the rest of the world in condemning this war uh, and in not making it easier. In any way whatsoever for Russia to continue to prosecute it. Mm -hmm. About that Blinken meeting with his Chinese counterpart, it was the first since the spy balloon incident. The back and forth between the United States and, and China, especially yesterday, has grown increasingly aggressive. 
Can this relationship be saved? The president believes that um, uh, that this is the most consequential bilateral relationship in the world, and uh, and that uh, as responsible powers, the world expects us to treat it that way. And coming out of Bali, President Biden uh, and President Xi agreed that they would do that, uh, and that's why Secretary Blinken was prepared to to go to Beijing right when this spy balloon uh, then uh, transited the United States. That certainly uh, did not aid our efforts to try to get this relationship back onto a better footing. The president said he'd be willing to talk to. President Xi in the future, and he will. And we still have lines of communication open with China, as you saw just uh, yesterday in, in Munich. And that's important, particularly when there's times of, of uh, tension like this. You want to avoid the risks of misunderstanding and miscalculation. Uh, now, look, we've been very clear uh, about uh, uh, our view of this uh, egregious violation of our territorial sovereignty, uh, and we acted on that. Uh, but that doesn't mean that, uh, that the relationship with China is less important. In fact, right Right now, those lines of communication, as I said, are more important. All right, and we're going to leave it there. John Kirby from the White House, thank you very much for coming back to The Sunday Show. Yes, sir. Good to be with you.